Hey guys, YouTube's been real awesome about the community guidelines, so if you are over the age of 18, you're cool. But if you're not, please don't watch this. Okay, well, the machine is working, so what you're seeing is it kicks on and it rotates one way, then it stops, then rotates the other way after a few seconds. The machine that I bought also came with a full set of bubble bags, so this is a full set inside a nice carrying case. I already have the Rosin Evolution bubble bags, and the reason why I bought this set that came with this is really just to have an extra set of bubble bags just in case. With that being said, I'm going to actually get some water in this, uh, fill it up, and then drain it all down just because there's dust, debris, there's some plastic particles and stuff, so... So basically, this entire machine comes ready to go, right out of the box, you just got to plug it in and you're good to go. And there's nothing uh, to install, nothing to really worry about. Uh, some of the sheets that come with it are just troubleshoot sheets, just let you know if there's a problem with leakage or with something else, it just kind of gives you some hints on what you should be checking. Other than all of that, you got your drain hose right here off of the side and there's nothing to switch on to drain it. You basically, when you're ready to drain, you just take it off and the water will drain on its own. Okay, first things first. What is first things first? What are we doing? Okay guys. So the material that we're running today is from the 5x5, trim, shake, small buds, but I can see right through the bag. This stuff's caked with trichome still, so we're going to go ahead and use this stuff. It's about three ounces of material that I'm going to stuff into this bag. It shouldn't have a problem fitting, to be honest. And this is a variety. We got Chocolate Minnow G, Granddaddy Purple, Girl Scout Cookie. feel like I'm missing something here. Oh, Amherst Sour Diesel. So there is a variety of strains up in this little bag here. As you can see, it's a lot of shake, a lot of trim, some real fine stuff. So that first micron bag, that 190 micron bag and the 160 micron bag we're using is going to probably catch a lot of those small fine contaminants that are gonna go through this 220 bag. This is shake and trim from the previous harvest being kept in the freezer for about one month. It's May. For two months, May, June, July. So it's been two months. Okay, so first I'm actually going to add ice, add some water. Once I get about here, I will then load up this bag with the material. <laughs> So we got the 220 make round bag, which we're gonna basically stuff all of this into this bag and then get it into this machine and then continue from there to fill it up with ice and water. Oh, damn, that hit me so hard. Oh, it smells so fucking good. Get this in in one, in one go. Do it over this, just in case strike combs wanna right away pass through the bag. I'm not too sure if I should be filling this bag up a lot more, but you know what guys, this is about three ounces, maybe, maybe under three ounces, two and a half, three, something like that. Either way, I don't want to overdo it, so we're going to start with this and just go with the flow, man. Oh, it smells so good. Try to push the bag all the way down to submerge it in the water to actually leave the material in 
uh, the machine like this with the water submerged for about 15 minutes. You want all of those trichomes, you want all of the material to get extremely cold and frozen again. Also, in 15 minutes when I come back, if I notice that I might need to add more water, I will. But right now, I'm thinking we're pretty good. Okay, she's filled up. I'm gonna let it sit for 10, 15. Okay guys, it's been 24 minutes. The level's about right. I'm still gonna let this machine sit just for a couple more minutes. I still gotta prep my bubble bags. There's nothing in here and there's one little thing here. This is a five gallon bucket, starting with the 25 Micron bag at the very bottom. First bag to go in. 73. I'm skipping the 45 just because it's too many bags. Anything after the 120 is good bubble hash to me, so. And since I pressed it all into rosin, I usually just mix it all together. The more bags, the more work really, and uh, I can leave a couple bags out. 90 micron bag. 120 micron bag. The 160 micron bag. The bag that's in here is the 220 micron. So it's going through the 220. And then this 190 is also gonna catch a lot of contaminants. We're not gonna keep any of the hash in this bag either. It's gonna get tossed right out. What we're gonna do is multiple runs uh, to process all of this uh, hash. So for this first run, we're only gonna run it for six minutes and then we're gonna actually put everything back in, water, ice, including the material. We're gonna run it for a total of uh, 12 minutes. And then what we're gonna do is do a, probably do a third run and run it for 15 minutes and just try to collect everything off this material. So that's the game plan. This is the first run. Keep in mind, I've never used this machine. I might have filled it too much. So there's no mark letting me know. It's looking like I did. We will see. Here we go. Yeah. That's a leak, that's a leak. So every time it, it changes its rotation, so. I might drain a bit. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to drain a bit. Oh, a little bit more. <laughs> It's close. Ooh, this is nice, to be honest. Okay, so it just turned off. I'm gonna get the GoPro on. I'm gonna actually get this drained, set this camera up at a different angle, and uh, yeah. Then we're gonna get ready for the next run. It's gonna be quick. Let's do this. Little guy here. So, now the color of this water as you can see, you want it to be as light as possible, but that has a lot to do with the material that you're gonna be using. Since we're using shaky trim that's been processed on a dry sift screen already once, this is two months old, so you gotta keep that in mind too. Honestly, the most ideal time to go ahead and make yourself some bubble hash is only a couple days after you finish drying your crop. Get that in the freezer and get ready to run. Now I just really want to fill this back up and get this back going. So let's do that. A little bit more ice.
first run was only three minutes long. It's going to get most of our good trichomes. The color of the hash we're going to collect on this first run right here, which I'm going to collect the second this machine gets going. That's going to be our, our best hash. It's going to probably be the best color. But we're also going to then run this for another 15 minutes and try to get the rest, everything that's left on that material off. And uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. So let's set this to 15 minutes. And I think I might have filled this up a little bit too much. So let's start this up. Okay guys, time to collect. So here's the 190 micro bag. I gotta talk over this machine, sorry. So we're not gonna keep anything in this bag. We're gonna get rid of it all. I don't got a lot of room here, guys. Here we go, clean the bag out. Just gonna lay this down on the ground here. So the next bag is going to be the 160 micron bag. Let's get a closer look. Oh no. Yeah, we're not keeping that. So that's the 160, all clean. Now this is gonna be definitely our first batch of hash that we collect. This is going to be the 120 micron bag. Moving on to the 90 micron bag. That helps get all the hash off the sides and down into the pool right here in the middle. Oh yeah, it's looking nice. We should make it some hash. Rinse everything off into the next bag because all this, there's still hash there. That's gonna wash off and you have another chance to collect it. This is the 73 micron. I'm just trying to collect all of this before this machine finishes here. Ooh, baby. Now the final bag. Quick drain.
So the machine just finished, so I gotta quickly pack. Okay, so it's finished, so we're gonna have to drain it down into these bags. Oh, wow. That's a good one. Definitely a nice pile there. Looking like some nice color too. Oh, bag's not really tight here. That's a little quick trick there if you want to learn how to drain this bag quick. First, push the air down. Couple bounces. It really clears out the water quick. I like to spray it, get all the hash down on the bottom. And you can see all the hash now is going to pool up, so it's a lot easier to collect that way. That's the final 25 Macron bag. Okay, so we're going to do our third run. Fill this right back up. We're gonna do another 30 minute run. That time we're gonna go ahead and repack the bags into this container. And uh, yeah, time lapse I guess. So for this third run, I was definitely lacking a little bit of ice. It seems like it's just water right now. I'm sure it's really cold water, but. So this is gonna be the last run. And it's now done, so we're going to go ahead and start draining it. I'm definitely curious to see if uh, we're going to get anything worthy. The water looked like a nice color. So After a strain, put a nice rinse in there to get it all out. Or squeeze it all out. There's a lot of good stuff in here. You need to get that pushed out. Okay, so now I'm happy. Now you don't do that until you're completely done with your run. So that may be on your third or fourth bubble run. On your final one, you wanna make sure you drain it like that. Uh, this way you're not wasting anything. Now it's back to collecting. Now 
are on to the 120 bag, and this is the very first bag we do collect, and the hash is always mediocre here. So typically, we see the most hash in the 90 and 75 micron bag, at least the way I do my runs. Um, so this is a lot for the 120. Oh yeah, see here we go, got a nice, some nice color on this too. And just as important, we got a fat amount of it. I gotta tell you guys, I'm really loving this bubble machine. Of course, I got my cold spoon right out of the freezer because it makes collecting hash a lot easier. See, we still got hash on the bag, so we're gonna clean that off. So guys, look at that. Got ourselves another fat yield. Oh! Yep, you saw that. Final 25 make round bag. Gonna let this bag drain out. Collect this up. And then I'm gonna show you how I am using a new drying technique that I've never used before. And it's called microplaning, and it involves freezing the bubble hash back up and then basically grinding it down into a fine powder. So I'm gonna show you that as well. I've never done it before. There's a lot of first times on this video right now. Ah, uh, don't fuck up. Wow, look at that. Look at that. A fucking fat chunk of hash. Hey guys, the hash is in the freezer. Put it in about five minutes ago, so it's still wet, but about an hour she'll be good to go. You can see I got a lot more material I gotta make bubble out of. But we'll be back. Okay guys, so this is how we're gonna dry it. We got ourselves some frozen bubble. I'm gonna leave the rest in the freezer because I don't want it to warm up on me, but essentially we're just gonna take it and just like that. Grind it down, microplane it. Now this is going to take a while. So I'm gonna be like real honest with you guys. Uh, this is probably not my preferred method just because it involves a lot more work versus just breaking up the bubble hash into a few clumps and then putting it next to a dehumidifier to let the dehumidifier do the majority of the work in terms of taking the moisture out. This is probably gonna yield a better result. We're probably gonna get a quicker dry. I have a good feeling the color is gonna actually stay nice and white in comparison to this way, which I'm gonna show you. So it's been 24 hours, the hash has been drying in the room with a dehumidifier set to 35% RH. We have an AC in that room as well cranked way down to I think 18 or 19 Celsius. We have the microplane bubble hash as well as just the hash that we broke down into small pieces with a knife. And I guess we're going to collect it all, see how much we got of each. And well just compare, is the microplaning worth the extra work or not? In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have mixed all of the bags together into one big pile like I did. I put the 120, the 90, the 75, as well as the 25 all together into one big pile and it obviously got mixed up. As you look through this bubble hash, you can see much darker hashes mixed in with much lighter hashes and that's really what you're seeing. It's just the different micron collections mixed together because I'm an idiot. But honestly, I really just want to compare right now. Is the microplaning bubble hash better? Okay, this microplane hash does look quite a bit better than this hash over here. There may be something to this microplane 
dry check method. Ultimately, looking at it now, it seems drier. It seems like the color retained was a bit better. However, I think the microplane tool that I particularly had might have been too small and too fine. Maybe it was a good thing. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not too sure. I'm gonna look into some different methods of microplaning. I know Bubble Man, he has a few videos on that. So I'm gonna have to go back, check those videos out. Now, how much hash did we end up with? I got the microplane hash here and I got the other bubble hash right here and in total we got 21 grams of bubble hash. Now I thought I only really microplaned about 3 to 4 grams but apparently I did over 6 grams of microplane hash and of course this is about 15 grams of the other hash that we just used a knife to break it up with. That's my whole process of how I make bubble. I'm new to the whole game and I think to be honest when it comes to the extraction part pretty damn easy and I feel like I got a good handle on that but when it comes to the drying of the bubble hash it's something I still need to work on there's also something called a freeze dryer that it's kind of expensive but it seems to be if you're a pro and you're doing this all the time it's a good investment I'm gonna have to take a look into that look into maybe some different tools to use for microplaning either way I'm extremely happy and I'm gonna be pressing this into rosin and of course making a video for it that bubble machine Definitely worth every single dollar I spent on it. And I would recommend buying one if you are interested in doing some bubble hash. I will put that link down below. It's an Amazon item. In terms of microplaning and uh, versus not microplaning, I would say worth it. But a little bit excessive in terms of work. However, worth it. That's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe. For Patreons, this video is released early just because you guys fucking rock. Really appreciate the support. We're up to 92 Patreons, which is fucking crazy, as well as they get additional content and one-on-one -on -one conversations with me. And more importantly, it's just about supporting this channel because we are unmonetizable because we all know YouTube fucking hates us. Or at least me, for sure. They really fucking hate me. If you are looking to support the channel with more than just a like and a comment, which by the way, that's plenty enough, you can always check me out on my Patreon page. There's multiple tiers to choose from, and you also don't have to donate every month. Just donate what you can, when you can, and that's good enough. Thank you, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on all my platforms, including Instagram, if you want to see some bomb-ass pictures, because I also really like taking pictures.